fishing and I got a new hook that I'm exper experimenting with here this is called a spear point it's something that uh, that I that I found that I thought was pretty interesting and I'm actually wanting to try it out here today it's never too smart to try something new in a tournament so I'm actually just out here playing and uh, I decided I'd try this hook out today but the reason one thing that I like about this hook is the gap and uh, it's got a really really interesting uh, curvature to the gap on the hook what I mean by gap the the space between the point and the shank of the hook and I am probably contrary to popular belief I'm not really a big fan of wide gap hooks I don't really care for EWG hooks um, or you know big gaping wide gap hooks I'm not really that big of a fan of them over the years I've done a lot of videos on on drop shots and how to rig them and really you know my drop shot setups is pretty doggone simple i don't have a lot of fancy things that i that i do with the drop shot i have basically two style hooks that i use uh you know either nose hook or i'll uh pretty much texas and then i'll do some wacky drop shot in two i almost use a 3 16th or a 3 8 sinker almost it doesn't matter if i'm fishing in five foot or 60 foot it's probably the two sinkers that i'm using tie it on with a palomar knot and I uh, run the line tie back through the hook so that the hook point stands out just like what you see it here. And you can see I've got a leader that's probably about 20 inches long. So that's pretty much my standard setup for, for a drop shot. I've got a few different baits that I like to use, shad style baits, and you know, just a, like a, a straight tail worm or, or even a stick bait is pretty much what I'm gonna put on this, wacky style or nose hook. And, um, Everything else is pretty simple. This is six pound test line. I'm using six today. You know, I'll use as heavy as 12, just depending on what I'm trying to do with the drop shot, but pretty standard setup here. But the thing that's always important and most important, especially when you're talking about finesse because you got lighter line, is your hook style and the setup of your hook. That means so much because it's gonna make your bait behave differently. And obviously once you hook up, the style hook that you have is very, very important. When I'm looking for these fish that's deep like this, I'm going to spend a lot of time behind the wheel just looking at my graph. I've got three uh, screen splits here. Basically, I'm running my map. I am running a uh, 3D sonar, and I'm also running my 2D. I like to have the 3D and the 2D side by side so I can compare what I'm looking at. But basically what I'm doing is I'm going around in the mouths of any of these little ditches. You can see this place where I'm fishing here, there's a bunch of different arms that split off different ways and uh i'm just fishing in the mouth of them around any of the points any of the conjunctions the points in the ditches where the timber starts and stops anywhere there's a transition no timber no timber no timber all of a sudden there's timber or if there's a point where it's shallow 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 and then it drops off the deep any kind of dress transition doesn't matter what it is is basically what basically what we're looking for when we're, we're out here grabbing Here's one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> that is fun. Just right, oh, that's a good one too. Right on the edge of that timber line down there. I mean like 35 foot. You can see there's a big wad. Whoa. Big wad down there in 35 foot and I just dropped it down to him. Uh, let's see. I think I could flip that one. This is a perfect example. Just hook that guy up. You see how he didn't have any leverage to get off because of the way the, the hook is pinned up against his lip with no gap at all. If I had a big wide gap drop shot hook, like it's even kind of hard to get off here. But you can see how you see how that there's such a small gap in between the hook shank and the point of the hook. That fish just, even no matter how much he thrashed around, no matter how much he tried to wobble and dig, since there's a small gap, he's locked in. He's locked in there. I'm not sure how good you guys can see that. He's locked in. And if I had a big gap hook, a big space in between 
the area he could easily just use all that for leverage to to basically make a hole in his lip and get off but just because i have that narrow gap gap there a little gp finesse had him locked there's two things in particular that really really uh really i think work against you with wide gap hooks number one is the fact that you have a a lot of material hook point hanging out the fish's mouth if you're fishing around structure if you're fishing around, in particular around lily pads and grass or any type of vegetation why gap hooks can really really uh that can be a problem with a lot of hook hanging out because basically what you've made is a really good hook removal tool because as soon as that fish swims by a piece of grass the the hook point and everything that's hanging outside of his mouth grabs the grass and now you've got everything tangled up now the second thing that i think works against you with a wide gap hook is the fact that you give the fish a lot of leverage so when you hook the fish hook penetrates it's hanging out of his mouth and you've got a big gap hook that's just all of that room and that bend of the hook this is the hook point all of that bend that goes all the way back to the line tie if it's a big space there the more space you have in between that the hook shank and the point I feel like you just give the fish so much leverage to waller. If you're from the south, you know what waller means, but so much room to move around. See a few on the graph right there. Right now, so I'm gonna stop the boat. About as important as anything in fishing deep like this is boat control. You know, when you see a fish, knowing what to do with the trolling motor, being able to point the boat in the wind, uh, that's, that's about as important as, as anything, your equipment and all. There they are down there on the bottom right now. I see, see a few down there on the bottom. He got it. Got it. Up. Oh, oh, he let it go. He got it. Got it that time. I can see him. You can see him coming up. Look at all the fish coming up on the graph with this one that I got on. There's a lot more. Whoa. <laughs> a lot more coming up with this one. You can see, like, when you catch one, the rest of the fish come up with him. <laughs> Dude, if you're willing to get out here when it's cold like this, a lot of people hate to do it, including myself. We hate to get out when it's cold like how it is today, dude. This, when I woke up this morning, see, that's a nice one though. I woke up this morning, it was about 28, 29 degrees. I was like, dude, I, you know, I fish tournaments, so like, I, I get enough of cold weather through the year, but if a man is willing to get out here, a man or a woman is, or a child, or your dog, or cat, whatever you fish with, if you're willing to get out here when it's 20 degrees like it is today, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I cheated a little bit. It's, uh, it's, it's probably 45 now because I waited till about 10 o'clock to get out here. You can catch fish all day long, and the thing I like about it is once you find them, you got to be a little bit patient because the schools are a lot bigger this time of the year. But once you find the fish buddy like you can you can catch them like you can catch them and catch them and catch them and catch them but sometimes it takes a little extra patience because the fish wad up in such big wads this time of year that you're only going to catch them in you know a few areas there's a bunch of them down there now matter of fact he might already have that that's a lot of them jeez should be getting busy anytime man they come up like they're small but you get them to the top and then they start thrashing around look at the graph go explode now jeez what i love about it usually you know i'm usually on a drop shot i feel pretty safe until they get to the top and start thrashing around and like just like what it's designed to work like this thing jeez he's peeing that fish would never come off look at that I mean, look at look at how he's pinned. You see how it goes in. You see how it's just pushed right up against the shank and the point of the hook. He ain't going nowhere. He he has no chance but to come and do what I told him to do, which is get in the god dog on boat. That's all. That's all he has opportunity to do is what I tell him to do. <laughs> that's a, and I love that. <laughs> all of those are fish that followed my fish that I just caught up caught one and they all followed it up but all that fuzz you see all that that's timber and i'm fishing that timber edge right there i'll drop my drop shot straight down through it 
and all the fish just follow that one up from the bottom. It's crazy, like they always do that. So I'm gonna show you another technique that I like to use too to fish deep water. Uh, we're fishing in 30, 35 foot of water today. And I'm still gonna use the same hook, but I'm gonna up it a size. I'm gonna go to a size two, number two of the GP Finesse. And I'm gonna try a Nico down. Now, a Nico is a bait, you guys, I'm sure you've seen, you know, most guys are gonna cast a Nico at some type of structure or they're gonna skip it under a dock, uh, you know, fishing around bridges. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to fish the Nico vertically today uh, and it works really good. You just kind of got to get the right size weight to get the bait down to the fish when you see them. But a Nico is an excellent, excellent. I don't tell nobody this is between you and I, right? Don't tell anybody about this, but a Nico is a great way to catch fish vertically too. Just a little different presentation. The thing that I really like about the Nico fish vertically is I'm noticing that a lot of these fish today are glued to the bottom. And when I say glued to the bottom, I mean they're stuck to the bottom. And this would allow me to stay in contact with the bottom a lot better than, than a drop shot. You wouldn't think that much line difference would make a big difference, but it does. And sometimes those fish don't want to feed up when it's very cold. They want to, they're looking down for small crawfish and whatever's on the bottom, and they, that's where they want to feed. I'm on a big group of fish, really big group of fish right there. Drop my Nico down to it. It's just kind of just cascading through the school. We'll see if we can get one of those. That's good. That's good. That was on the Nico. I think he's in the trees, y'all. I think he's in my trees. I hope I get him out of the trees. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. He's pulling me around a little bit. This is on the Nico. I was on the Nico. I took the same bait that I had on the drop shot and that Nico's fished it like Nico style. I was in a little deeper. I went I backed out to like 45 foot of water. It's a little bit better fish there. A lot better fish. I took the minnow style bait and Nico Come here. Look, dude, he is hooked like perfectly right on the top of the lip. Pound and a half, two pounder there. Probably two, probably more like a two. We're gonna say it's a two. We just ain't gonna get the scale out. We're gonna say he's a two pounder. Uh, he is uh, locked up like a lawnmower in wet grass. I'll show you this rig that I caught that one on. I just had it, uh, this is a Nico style minnow bait. Uh, for, that I'm fishing called Streaks 375. I didn't rig it traditional drop shot like what I have been doing all day, but it, it definitely uh, it definitely works as a Nico bait too. But it's not a bait that you would normally think of as a Nico bait. Now what I'm going to do, I want to take for, for Nico. I'm using going to take a stick bait. This is a four inch stick bait from Z-Man, and then uh, this is a finesse worm. And I've got a weight that I'm actually going to stick in the head of the bait. What I'm going to do is a Nico is basically where we put a. a a weight in the head just like this and a nico is a lot like i'm sure if you guys had already fish it it's a lot like a uh like a wacky rig i mean it's it's very similar to a wacky rig except you've got a weight in one side of the hook that that allows the bait to sink and it and it will pretty much stand up on the bottom and i'm not going to hook it just dead in the center i'm going to go pretty much towards the front third the back side of the front third and I'm going to hook the hook point towards the back. I want the hook point going away from the lid or towards the back of the tail because this, this is going to make sense here in a second. I'm going to hook it like this. And so the further I hook this bait towards the back, towards, towards the weight, the faster it's going to sink. If I go more towards the middle, it's going to sink a lot slower because there's going to be more resistance. And so when I drop it down, you're going to put a little action to it and that tail is going to stand up and that weight's going to keep the bait on the bottom. So uh, this is just a Nico and it's a great way to catch fish this time of the year. Just drop it vertically. It's just something they don't really see fish in 35, 40 foot of water. They don't see this presentation. So that's what makes it a little different than everything else. Those are 
36. That's a good one. That's probably the best one today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. No, he's not that big. He just come up deep. So, I don't know. I was just excited. Just excited. It's always exciting. <laughs> he's not that big. He's not that big. Yeah, I know, right? Honestly, in the wintertime, they can be uh, they can be a little funny about colors. And they get really peculiar about what colors they uh, feed on in the wintertime. Dude, they won't you won't get a bite if they're on one color or a shad color, and you you got something else on. It's hard to even get a bite doing something else. So I'm going back to just a four inch stick bait. This color is called Mud Bug. Same way, just rigging the Nico style, hooking it in the top third of the bait. We're gonna drop it down vertically on some of the uh, fish that we're marking on the graph, but that's what it's gonna look like here. I'm gonna tighten up this sinker on the. So there it is there, and uh, yeah, we'll drop him down. See what I can catch out here. There's still some fish running around here. You just gotta. They get in those big groups. So if you're like if they're right there, and then I'm you know 40 yards over here to my left you don't get a bite so it's very important to get right where those fish are feeding because they gang up big time this time of year if you're not in the right spot you don't get to participate in the program that day Time. And this is a perfect, and they all followed it up, but all that fuzz you see, all. Got it. Locked him up again. Look, that's, I love, just look how that. me today we've got six inches of snow in the forecast for tomorrow and I can feel the temperature dropping continuously all through the day the temperature has been dropping so I think I'm gonna take it in and I can't promise you that I won't be back out here tomorrow because when it's cold like this as miserable as, as it is it's a lot like going to the gym the thought of coming out here and freezing your butt off sucks but when you get out here and you start fishing and you start seeing how the fish are reacting and where they're, what they're using and finding those areas. It's kind of fun. So I hope you learned something about the hooks that I used today, those spear point hooks. I'm going to leave a link in the description box of this video where you guys can check out those spear point hooks. We're going to do another video here a little bit later on the EWG hook that they have we can use for Texas rigging. Today I was using the GP Finesse. That's the hook that I was using, a number two and a number three GP Finesse. Uh, and I, I never lost a fish today. So it's a real interesting concept. I think those guys got something there at Spear Point, so check them out. Mm -hmm.